Hey guys, so I thought I would run through the basics when it comes to sets, reps, straight sets, um, heavy sets, and then back off sets, and then some of the other like advanced training methods you may come across kind of within the programming. So I'll probably tag on to the end like drop sets and cluster sets as well. I'll just have to add those into the document. So let me share my screen with you. So as I said, um, I've had a few people ask some questions about like reps, sets, like when to adjust weights and things like that. So I thought I'd record this quick video that's gonna cover a lot of those basic questions for you and just makes it much, much easier moving forward. And then I can also show you exactly like how I want you to record that when you are on the app. So, um, at the very basic, like reps and sets. So what you'll see in your programming is you'll see the name of the exercise, and then it's going to have something like three by 12 to 20 or three by eight to 12 as the first number. That's the reps and the sets. So every single time, for example, you're doing a shoulder press, every single time you come back to the starting position, so up and then back down, that is one rep. Those reps are grouped into one set. So when I've done 12 reps, that creates one set. So if it's three sets of 12 reps, that's kind of what you're doing with the exercise rise. So some of you may already know this, others won't. So that's why, as I said, I'm covering it right from the basics. So in your first program, depending on how advanced you are, most things will probably be in straight sets, which is where you do three sets of the same like rep range and you'd probably choose the same weight for that. Again, if you're a beginner slash beginner intermediate, you're probably gonna be wanting to do say three sets of eight to 12 or three sets of 12 to 20. So we give you a range to land between. So if you did three sets of 16 here, then that's perfect. If you did uh, on your first set, you could get, say, 20. Your second set, you could get 16. And your third set, you can get 14. Again, that weight is perfect. Whereas what you might find is after, say, three weeks, if you're using five kilos for this, on the first set, you might be able to get 20. The second set, you get 20. The third set, you get 20. In which case, you then probably want to up the weight. So what you want to be doing is you want to be reaching muscle failure within these rep ranges. So if you can do all three sets, keep good form and hit all the reps, then the next week you want to be upping that weight. This is why it's super important that you are logging your weights and you're logging your reps within the True Coach app. And then when it comes to the end of it, I'm not even sure if I can do an arrow on this keyboard. Um, insert. Arrow, that's the one. So on your keypad um, for your phone, go into the smileys option and search for an arrow. So if you have done more than the week before, you're gonna do the up arrow. If it's the same, you're gonna do a sideways arrow. And if it's actually less, you're gonna do a downward arrow. So I'll show you what that looks like within the app, kind of when we get to the end with somebody who does it quite regularly. But what it allows me to do is I can then just have a quick look when you're doing your check-in. I will normally look at what's happened for the week. And if there's arrows that are all pointing up, which means like all our lifts are progressing in terms of the weight we're using or the number of rep reps we're doing, I can see that everything is moving along and that like programming is going well. If there's more like sideways and down arrows than there is up arrows, that's then a red flag, red flag for me to then go in and look a little bit deeper when it comes to the programming side of it. So are we in need of a deload week? Do we need to have a diet break? Um, there's a couple of other things that kind of could be involved in it. Have we run the program for too long? So if you want kind of like better kind of quality in terms of the programming then the feedback you can give me just by putting those arrows in means I'm going to pick up on the fact you need a new program much much quicker than if I'm consistently having to ask you like how's your programming going are all your lifts progressing so as you get more advanced 
you may then find you've got, say, a heavy first set and then a back off set. So that will either look like one set of, say, six to 10, and then a back off set of two sets of eight to 12, or sometimes you'll get something like this, where it's a heavy first set of six to 10, then a back off set of eight to 12, and then another set of kind of 15 to 20. So obviously you want to hit failure within each of these rep ranges. Because the rep ranges are bigger, you will need to make the weight lighter. So for example, this is quite a common thing to do on squats because they're a big muscle group and actually hitting across all those different rep ranges is going to hit um, different muscle fibers within that same muscle group. So for example, it might be say 60 kilos here for a set of 10, then you might drop it by 10% and do 55 and then drop it by another 10% and do 50. So the drops should be anywhere from five up to 20%. So obviously as the weight gets heavier, if you're doing like 150 kilos up here, like to go from six to 10 to eight to 12, like you may need to do a slightly bigger drop than 5%. It might need to go up to 10%. Um, but what this allows you to do is it allows you to hit failure across like different rep ranges. And say this week you might go up on your first, lift but then this one stays the same and this one actually goes down because actually you're more fatigued than you were the week before what you could then do is right i'm going to keep my 60 kilos i'm going to push my 60 my initial uh weight up because actually i've hit all the weights within uh, hit all the reps within that range but I'm going to keep 55 the same because I hit the same on that one and try to improve the reps on it. And this one came down. So actually, I'm definitely going to keep that one the same and then try to push more volume kind of through improving the reps on the two back off sets, whereas you've improved the weight on the initial set. Same vice versa. You might under hit in terms of you've only hit six because you've just pushed the weight up, but you max out at 12 and 20. So you may then put keep this one at 60, but push this one up to say, keep. you could even keep that one at 55 and push this one up to 55. Because again, that's still progressive in the overload. You've still done more total work because there's more weight on the bar for these like higher rep ranges. So it, as long as it's progressive, it can be the weight you're lifting, the amount of reps you're doing, or keeping the same weight, but getting better quality. As you get more experience with weights, what you'll find is as the weight gets heavier, your 12th rep and your first rep look different. So what you want ideally is the first rep and the last rep of a set to look the exact same from beginning to end. And that's when then you know it's good to kind of progress the weight up. So yeah, so obviously when to up the weight. So you want to up the weight when you have hit like the top end of each of those rep ranges a couple of times. So at least like say two to three weeks at first, you'll go up quite quickly. So in the first few weeks, you may push up. Once you get to a point where you're not making like linear progress, so you might get into a rep range where the first week you hit like 10 and then 11 and then 12, Try to hit the 12 like two or three weeks in a row then before pushing that weight up, just because the progress is going to be a little bit slower. You might want to tidy up that technique a little bit more before kind of pushing that weight up. When you first start, what you might find is say, um, for the example here, right, first week I get 10, 12 and 20. So I push the weight up five kilos. So this goes up to 65, then 60. 50, sorry, yeah, then 60, then 55 on here. And then again, you might get 10, 12, and 20. So then that might go up to 70. And then 65, and then 60. But now when you're at this one, right, we only hit eight on that first week, 10 on this one, and say uh, 16 here. So then you'd be looking to up the reps each week because you this is now your actual working weight this is where you should have been working in order to kind of grow tissue so then when you top out on this one you may want to stick at that top out point for say two to three weeks once you've reached the actual kind of like working weight just to make sure you solidify and not pushing that weight up too quickly and sacrificing your technique kind of along the way
So that's your heavy back offsets. And yes, you want to stay working within the ranges. So you do want to hit failure. So if I set your set for 30, then you want to be hitting failure within that 30, or you need to kind of up those reps, so up those weights. So uh, we have drop sets and cluster sets. These are probably the other two that you may see. I don't use drop sets very often, but they're a tool that can be used, especially during like a cutting phase to kind of get extra volume in there. So what a drop set would look like would be say a triple drop set. You'd have 10, 10, and then max. So what you would do is you'd pick a weight that you'd normally fail at 10 on. So for example, a bicep curl, um, you might, do let's say 15, two times 15 kg dumbbells. You do a set of 10. You're then gonna drop that weight straight away without taking any rest and then do another set of 10. You might then drop that weight rather than by five this time, we're gonna do 7.5 and then do that to absolute failure. So what that's then gonna do is you're gonna record this weight record this way and record this way, but you don't need to record the reps on the last one. It's just right, did I get 10? Did I get 10? And um, did this one's just to take it to absolute failure, to make sure you're taking that muscle to failure, just because you're hitting failure then across three different rep ranges. So this one, you would probably only do like one set on it, just because it's quite neurologically fatiguing. And the other thing is a cluster set. So a cluster set, you'd pick a weight that you would fail at, say, again, it's a medium weight, so like eight to 12. You'd pick, um, I normally do cluster sets on legs, or I sometimes do them with pull-ups as well, just because not everybody can do like sets of 12 to 15, but 10 sets of three is more achievable. So what you would do is you do, I tend to set an interval timer and do 10 seconds for work and then 20 seconds rest. And you do 10 sets of three. So it's still a normal controlled contraction. So for example, on a leg extension, it might be up, hold, one, two, then bring it back down. In 10 seconds, you should be able to get three or four reps, slow and controlled, and then you take 20 seconds rest, and then go again. So you're doing 30 or 40 total reps with a weight you would normally hit failure at at 12. But because you're getting these little micro rests, you can push that muscle further than you would be able to in just kind of doing straight sets. So hopefully that's been useful and has answered some of the question, frequent questions that I get around kind of like what weight should I be using, like what are the straight sets, what the, the back off sets, et cetera, and it should make things a little bit easier moving forward.